Hi there viewers, welcome to Drawing Stuff by Paul Yatesman, that's me. While I am supposed to be a microbiologist and currently work in a call centre, gotta love redundancies, I've always had a passion for drawing and have recently taken it up again. When I did that, I decided to draw my works and whack them up here for posterity. I hope my videos provide you with inspiration and perhaps some tips on how to draw. Today I've sped up a Tim Burton style drawing of a predator. I think it came out okay. The head could possibly be bigger and maybe the limbs more spindly. Uh, with the framing box you'll see later, I think it looks quite nice after the line art. And my colouring is more towards my style than Mr Burton's, but hey, that's art. So this drawing took quite a while to complete thanks to doing character studies, which you can see on the left here. Um, the sketching took about 20 minutes, which I sped up to two and a half. Uh, I traced the sketch using a light box and then took that to my desk and worked more on the inking to add different weights all up. That took about 50 minutes. Wow, that's quite a long time uh, and no wonder I'm happy with the line art. Uh, Colouring in took about 40 minutes and that tended towards my minimalistic technique which uh, you'll most likely become familiar with if you stick around, so subscribe away please. As the video plays, I'll comment on the drawing and provide some details as to my thought processes and hopefully provide some insight or entertainment for you, my viewers. So with this video, I'm recording with my webcam and I'll move on to an SLR later, which I think comes out a bit better. So basically what I did was did a couple of character studies with the Predator using uh, a actual Predator figurine I have and also some references with Tim Burton's drawings and then I was trying to work on the head and rather than the the smooth sort of face mask that you see in I guess the first Predator movie I based that more on what you see out of um, I think Predator 2 but anyway, that's the final picture scanned in. Here the light box, I've really sped this up because it came out blurry first go with the um, the SLR. And it didn't come out too well, so you won't have to sit through this blurry bit for much longer because I sped it up to, I think, 40 seconds in total, which should be just long enough for me to waffle on about stuff and you get the general gist of what's going on here. So basically, I, wa I wanted to keep the... the the pencil so I basically just traced it using my light box from my um, what is it A5 pad onto an A4 pad uh, which brings us to this and then what I do now so we've got a before I worked on getting an overhead uh, set up for my camera this is on a tripod just to the side and I'm going through with a few different sizes of nib just to work on the line art to I guess imply some shadows so the light source is from I guess the side of the camera's on so anything to the left hand side of the drawing uh, as we look at it I'm trying to give a little bit of extra weighting to the pen to add some shadows and I will repeat that when I go through with the colouring so first off I'm um, I did the original trace with a 0.1 pen. I've gone through with a 0.5 now, just working on the left-hand side lines to add some weighting. Um, some things come into happy accidents, like the the base of the big spiky thing on the arm that actually looks like it's got a, I guess, some depth to the base of it now, whereas previously that was just a single line. And then I've gone through with the thickest pen, which is a what is it? Oh, that's rubbed off. Ah, uh, 0.6. Okay, so it's not much bigger than 0.5. So once that's done, I've moved to the overhead camera setup. Hopefully worked on the focus so it's not as bodgy. And I'm using a uh, Canon EOS uh, webcam software now, which uh, took a bit to set up because I figured you had to actually install the uh, original software off the provided disk before you could actually install the webcam utility, which would be great if Canon would say that. And if you've just come across and you found that out just by happenstance by watching this video, um, yay! Perhaps I could actually do a video about that. That would help someone probably. 
Okay, so what I've done here is I've gone through with a C1 Copic marker just to put grey everywhere but a couple of bits on the, the eye, the nose and the, the helmet. Because uh, Tim Burton has this style where things tend to be greyish, um, which would be say desaturated if you put this in Photoshop at the end and whack down the, um, the vibrance and the saturation, you'd get more of a Tim Burton sort of look. Because I think mine comes out a little bit bright at the end, even though I've gone through a fair bit of grey, uh, which probably means I could go and get some um, markers which are more of a, a dirty colour. Or perhaps because I went through with the, the cool grey, um, it's come out brighter. So I guess with, with these ones, what I should probably do is grab a, a set of warm greys because they've got a, I think, a brown sort of colour thing to them, whereas the cool greys are more blue. And I, you'll see when I do the armour, I give that a blue tinge which sort of matches the the color base of the, the cool gray colors. So anyway, um, going through with yellow is just to highlight the, the claws and the, the little things on the tentacle hair and just around the eye a little bit. Then I've moved on to the, I think, okay, yeah, so we've skipped over the, the next one up, which was a cool, grey number three and I'm on the cool grey number five to add some extra shadow onto the drawing and here's what happened is my uh, webcam utility ran out of power so I think I need to plug in the camera to actually have power while I'm using the utility so yeah so I screw around here for a bit to figure out what's going on and replace the battery and voila we're back um, and I think the focus went out a little bit when I did that. But anyway, okay, so now I've used a an E57, which is a light walnut, to do the loincloth and the belt and the, I don't know, utility pack thing. And then I grab another sort of brownish pen, which is the burgundy, and that's a R59, so more of a red brownie color, um, to do some extra strappy bits and the loincloth again. Just add some uh, extra shadow. And then I'm on to the extra dark gray, which is C7 now. And this does look a bit, bit too heavy at the moment, but you'll see when I go over with uh, another color, it blends a little bit so it doesn't come out as starkly defined. Shame that the uh, focus is kind of a bit iffy. Yeah, so that's the bit I just did there under the claw. That's because when I did the line art, I sort of doubled the lines up. So that was a happy accident. Um, here, with reference to the Predator, I've gone through like my, with my Predator figurine. It's sort of a yellowy, greeny colour, but I've gone through with my what is this green? It's a. YG07, which is an acid green. Uh, so my plan here was to colour the whole project in with the acid green and then go through with a darker green, which is the, at the moment we're on a, a G05, which is your greenish something or other, emerald green. And then from there, I've gone through with splotches to add this sort of, the help or whatever scales or whatever skin colorations with the G17 which is forest green and then after that I've gone through and added colors with the EA4 which is a natural lipstick and the E21 which is baby skin pink for the eye I use an R, a YR09 which is Chinese orange um, and then with the uh, the armor, it's like, what color do I use? Do I go grays or do I try something different? So that's when I grab the, the blue, uh, which is a mint blue, a B01, and that's the only blue I use. I didn't use a darker blue or anything. I just went over with uh, grays again, and here I've gone into a, my running out of ink and neutral floor gray just to finally flesh things out, figure out it's all done, and then here's the final image scanned in. 
Uh, no color adjustment here, but I guess if you had have, um, if I'd desaturated it, that would possibly look a bit more Tim Burton-ish in the color scheme. But there we go, that's my Tim Burton inspired Predator. Hope you enjoyed, subscribe, like, and all that fun stuff, and see you next time.